So with life is not always a box of chocolates, let's welcome Shivani. Thank you, British. Who loves chocolate? Yay, almost everyone. Excellent, so do I. But to be told by my cardiologist that chocolate is not good for me because it stresses my heart, the alternative was to tell him it stresses my heart if I don't eat chocolate. <laughs> yeah, and, and especially when your cardiologist wants to operate on your heart. And his name is Dr. Heaven. So needless to say, I haven't had that surgery yet. The year was 2000. I was a young medical scientist ready to take over the scientific world, um, which was more than just an oyster to me. But then one crisp autumn morning, I woke up with an array of sensations, which millions of people now in the world will be familiar with. Sore throat, just a burning sensation, fever, chills, aches, and just a general feeling of being unwell. I just put it down to the fact that maybe I had caught a bug from the lab or it, they were just side effects from the flu jab I had had the previous day. So I just took a day off to recover. I did get better, only to start feeling those symptoms again and again, week after week with no relief. The symptoms would get worse after work, even during chores or even when resting. For months on and off, I ended up exhausted in pains all over and fevers and just feeling like I have ongoing flu. I knew this was not normal, especially when I was a healthy 22 year old who didn't get sick a lot previously. There were visits to countless doctors, various specialists, lots of laboratory tests and everything was normal. The doctor started pointing to the fact that everything may be in my head. My friends, colleagues, and family members, they all thought I was making it all up. Even I was beginning to believe they may be correct. However, those symptoms escalated so much that I was eventually unable to walk on my own when it was at its worst. I was bedridden at times, and I would have to somehow crawl on my belly to go to the toilets at home. Pratish used to carry me from my car after work to my room. And at work at the sick bay, I remember eating the famous chocolate I mentioned earlier, just to get me through the day, not knowing that sugar was not good for me. That's for you, Gianni. <laughs> Thank you for that. But after work, 5 p.m., my body would feel like this whole lot of viruses were just having a huge, big, long, loud party inside me. I once woke up with this green, slimy goo on my arm. And, but it was only years, just a few years ago, I found out that it was a very rare symptom of a condition called fibromyalgia. I was diagnosed with the fibromyalgia in 2005, and it was barely heard of in New Zealand. I had to give up my dream job of becoming a transplantation laboratory specialist for leukemia, which is cancer of the blood. My body was just too ravaged to feel sad from whatever it was, to feel sad about leaving this job. I just knew I had given it my best. Now, fibromyalgia, fibro is muscles and myalgia is pain. But do not be fooled by the simplicity of the meaning of these two words. I have had years of feeling like my bones everywhere, my skin, my eyeballs, everything, my hair, everything on fire. That's the only way I can describe it excruciating pain that no distraction, no Netflix, no nothing could dampen. I have developed lung issues, cardiac complications, neurological issues, bladder issues, 
everywhere there's muscles and muscles are not just in your arms and legs. They're your cardiac muscles, your smooth muscles of your organs, dizziness, anxiety disorders, and so much more. It seemed like the immune system attacks the body even when there's no infection without any reason. Or maybe there's a virus dormant sleeping inside me, not having that party, but sleeping. But every now and then it just comes alive. So I constantly get flu-like symptoms day after day, week after week, month after month. And when it's really bad, we call it a flare. It's really bad. But nobody wants to hear about someone being sick each day or week constantly for years. Sadly, I live it. So does my husband. Thank you, British. But I try not to speak it over me all the time. The issues of brain fog and inability to concentrate at times is not fully understood as well. I do not know the exact reasons for this condition, but I know this much. I'm not lying. It's not in my head. <laughs> I'm not the only one to suffer from this. It is real for me. It is real for my family. I had two choices, give up and take my life, which I thought of many times, even tried, or get up and push on. I chose the latter. I chose to focus on the good that I had in my life. And these were including my loved ones and the little things in life, like having a, a bed to sleep on when I was unwell with someone suffering elsewhere in the world may not have. I chose joy despite my circumstances because even though it wasn't easy, I chose to live. Traveling, climbing mountains, um, braving the streets of Malaysia, <laughs> trying to get help for my husband who got food poisoning, together with him building two successful brands. One is this one we are all part of. Um, journeying with those who are suffering in body and mind, praying for others and, all, and enjoying cake <laughs> as a treat, <laughs> which I love. So all these while I was feeling utterly crap in body, but free and willing in spirit and focusing on what my body could do and not dwell on what I could not do, despite people pulling me down for not being there for them. That was tougher than actually being ill, but with God's love, my love and grace for others, I kept going through that valley. As I get older, it seems to be getting worse, but each day I wake up alive in my bed. This is the first thing I do literally for, for, for years I've been doing that. I thank God for each breath and I get up, get out of bed. Some days it's a bit late, but, and I live those precious 24 hours as best as I can. So coming towards the end, once during an experiment in uni, I tested my own blood. Yeah, we scientists will love doing experiments on ourselves, <laughs> only to discover my blood type is B positive. So that's what I'm doing, being positive, focusing on the DNA of B positive in my blood rather than on, the, on any virus or any autoantibodies. It is very hard and I am still struggling, but I choose to live and live with anything life throws at me. Why? Because Einstein, I love Einstein, by the way, Einstein once said, a life lived for others is a life worth living. I discovered that if I have a purpose, I re it really helps me to see beyond me. In conclusion, I would rather have the box of chocolates with all its ingredients known than have a condition with no cause no known cause or cure. But working with cardiac and leukemia uh, pediatric patients, I saw others in great pains as they battled to survive. I always thought of them in my most painful hours and I gained strength from the fact that they fought hard till their last breath 
and so will I. Two, because I know at the end of this, I will meet my chocolate maker in heaven, Jesus. But till then, there may be no chocolate. There's lots of water. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Wow, that is amazing, Shivani. Thank you for sharing. It's, it's powerful. Um, and yeah, like you said, I mean, I live it. So I, I totally understand, but I really hope it touched everyone else as well.